Hey kids, it's Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. Now you catch me today in a very excited mood because I'm riding a bike that I've been wanting to ride for absolutely ages. It's been long awaited and much requested. Today I'm riding the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. If you're interested in this bike, stick around and stay tuned. Okay, so this bike has been a long time coming. I think I first saw it at uh, the NEC show back in November Ooh, 2017 and given I'm now recording this in late January uh, 2019 sort of a year and a half in the making and uh, we were promised it uh, ages ago as I say and it looks absolutely amazing and uh, it's got all the uh, opportunity to be a game changer for Royal Enfield because it's uh, it really represents them up in the game in terms of build quality style and everything else it's kind of Royal Enfield getting a bit more, uh, you know, into the Triumph game, if you like. It looks very much to me like a Bonnefield of the, uh, Bonnefield, Bonneville of the previous generation. Now, it had its uh, international launch uh, about a month or so ago, maybe a little bit longer now in the US, but uh, it's just been very difficult to uh, actually get a ride on one, so I was absolutely chuffed when the guys up at the bike den here in Watford gave me a call yesterday and said, we've got a Royal Enfield Interceptor demo in, do you want to come and ride it? And he bit the hand off, so uh, there we are. Anyway. I've literally, this bike has only been ridden, I'm the third person to ride it, I think. It's only done something like 47 miles in its life. Uh, so it's uh, not running or anything like that. The tyres are still new, the brakes aren't sort of bedded in properly, so I'm not going to be going nuts. But having only ridden it for the last literally a couple of minutes, I can already tell this is just so much more of a bike than any previous Royal Enfield that I've ridden. I've ridden uh, the, other, the rest of the range, the Classic and the uh, GT, etc. And they're okay, but they didn't blow me away. But this thing... It's really nice, I have to say. It's the first uh, twin cylinder engine that Royal Enfield have made. It's something like a 648cc, I think. I'll uh, go through the detailed specs and a walk around in a minute. But if you weren't told this is a Royal Enfield, if you just dumped on it and were told to ride, you wouldn't know it was a Royal Enfield. It's nice and smooth. It's got bags of go. It sounds lovely. Nice and comfy. The only odd thing at the moment I'm finding is the foot pegs feel a bit odd. in that they're quite what they're a little bit wider apart than I'm used to but that's just a matter of getting used to these sort of ergonomics of the bike actually I've just slipped my feet out a bit and they feel fine now hello Mr Scooter Rider it's got loads of go though loads of low down grunt seats nice and comfy hello that mirror needs tightening up <laughs> I have to say I don't like these Mickey Mouse mirrors they do work okay there's a little bit of vibration a little bit of distortion in them I think uh, that's something I would change immediately. Hello. Delivery man's not a nodder. But that's a minor point. Mirrors can be can be sorted. The way the bike feels is lovely. This seating position, now I've got my feet sorted out. It's really comfy. Knees are at a slightly acute angle. But you're nice and upright. It's one of those bikes you could ride all day long. But my legs are you know, quite a bit splayed out, quite a bit wider than I would have expected, but uh, it's not uncomfortable, it's just a matter of getting used to it, as I say. This bike is entirely standard, it's got the standard pipes on and so on, and it sounds really lovely. Right, nothing too close behind, coming up to a mini roundabout, let's just try the brakes. Front brakes seem absolutely fine, the brakes on here are the little uh, baby Brembos, as I call them, the bi -brays. Which, considering the price of this bike, £5,500 on the road, it's got some really nice uh, really nice touches, like those brakes, for example. It's got ABS, of course. Got a slipper clutch. It's nice and smooth. This gearbox is uh, really nice to use. Nothing fancy about the bike, of course. No riding modes or anything like that. It's just a proper back-to-basics motorcycle. I expected it to feel a bit like the previous generation Bonneville, as I mentioned before, but actually it's much, much better than that. It feels more like the current generation Bonneville. Royal Enfield also up the game on the switch gear here. This is much more in line with uh, the sort of switch gear that you'd see on a modern Japanese bike. It doesn't feel low quality or like they've, like they've skipped on things. Love these classic clocks. Look really nice on here. No TFTs here, just clear rev counter and speedo 
but they've got some uh, LCD information at the bottom, trip counter, proper fuel gauge, which is really nice to see. And they're not all jumping around and flicking around, nice and steady. This is a proper classic bike, and uh, or classic modern, if there's such a thing. Imagine this would be a great bike as a basic uh, basis for customization. Let's just try the rear brake. Actually, the rear brake's very good. Clutch is lovely and light. Nice low seat on this as well, so you can get your feet flat on the deck, even though your legs are relatively wide apart compared to other bikes I've ridden. But here I am, stopped, my feet are flat on the floor. I'm only five foot eight. Absolutely no problem at all. It's quite a light bike as well. I think it's 202 kilograms wet. It does feel nice and light when you're riding it. Lovely thumpy engine. Unfortunately, it's a busy part of the world, a busy day, so uh, I've, I've proven it's great in the sort of urban environment. I'll uh, find somewhere we can do a little walk around and I'll show you the bike. And then maybe we can have a bit of a go on a quicker road afterwards as well, just to see what she's like then. But uh, yeah, so far, very impressed. The tyres on the bike as well haven't been skipped on. I think they're actually Pirelli and they were made specifically for Royal Enfield for this bike. They've got a tread pattern that's kind of retro-ish if you like. Uh, again, I'll show you that with a walk around. They look very similar tread pattern to what's fitted to things like the uh, Triumph Street Twin. Handling is lovely, just as I'm just lolloping around here slowly at sort of 30 miles an hour. Really nice relaxed ride. And they've done that great thing with the tuning, such that the torque is nice and low, so you can just thump along at real world speeds. There's definitely no lack of power. I'll tell you what, for a 5,500 pound bike, this is an absolute winner. That gearbox is just nice and snickable. I never thought I'd say that about a Royal Enfield gearbox. Suspension so far, I haven't sort of obviously tested it riding hard or anything, and it's gonna be difficult to do that today anyway, because it's pretty slippery and wet out, as you can see. But it feels nice to me, it's nice and, uh, it's not too soft that the bike's all wallowy, but it's not jarring my fillo fillings out either. It's in that Goldilocks zone. Not too hard, not too soft. It's got a nice sort of, uh, bit of a wind to the engine actually. Such a shame it's still winter because, uh, this would be a great bike for just lolloping around the lanes in the summertime. Perfect for that. Let's pull out of here and have a go at this engine. Sounds really nice. It's not obnoxiously loud or anything like that, but it's got a nice thumpy character to it. Orally, anyway, but that doesn't translate to the ride. There's no, I'm not getting vibrations through the pegs or through the handlebars. That's really pretty impressive what they've done with this. Right, let's have a little look down here. Of course, this bike, I think, is the first one that uh, Royal Enfield developed at their development centre here in the UK, which uh, famously uses X Triumph designers. And they've certainly done a nice job on this. Right, let's pull over here, one of my favourite little walk around spots, and I'll show you the bike in a bit more detail. Okay, neutral, easy to find, stand, easy enough to find. And this is the first Royal Enfield I've ridden, I think, where you can put the stand down and the engine will continue to run. In the past you couldn't do that, so that's a, a nice little feature. All right, let's uh, show you this then. Here we are. And this is the one in, uh, I can't remember what this particular paint scheme is called, but it's one of the standard paint schemes. Uh, they do do some more flashy ones with metal flake and stuff. Uh, and if you go for them, then uh, I think the, the price goes up to something like 5750 or something like that. But uh, let me uh, get the other camera out and I'll, uh, I'll show you around the bike and talk you through the spec. Okay, here she is then. The uh, 2019 Royal Enfield uh, Interceptor 650. Or is it the, uh, yeah, it is the Interceptor 650. I thought it could have been the 650 Interceptor. Anyway, 
as uh, I think you'll agree, pretty handsome looking bike. Got to be a bit careful here that I don't get run over. Uh, let's just give you a little walk around to show you the machine. As you see, classic motorcycle design as far as I'm concerned. Tank, two wheel seat and twin exhaust. Uh, it looks, you know, if I was to draw a motorcycle when I was a lad, it would look just like that. So uh, I think top marks were starting from uh, Royal Enfield. So uh, well done there. Alrighty, let's go through the specs then. So the engine, which as mentioned, brand new for Royal Enfield, this twin, 648cc uh, twin cylinder parallel twin uh, air cooled as I say brand new for Royal Enfield is of course Euro 4 compliant puts out 46.99 brake horsepower at 7100 uh, rpm so it's not going to win too many races but it's perfectly adequate for the road uh, by way of comparison the Triumph Street twin puts out 64 HP but that's uh, a 900 cc engine so it's down on the current um, uh, budget end Bonnevilles if you like but nonetheless it's still uh, ample for the road in my opinion torque 52 newton meters at uh, 4000 rpm that's 38 foot pound in the old bunny uh, brakes as you can see on the front we've got a single disc here let's come down and show you that uh, it seems perfectly adequate it's got a uh, by brace say that's the sort of um, cheaper end of the Brembo uh, range twin pot caliper on a single disc uh, the disc itself 320 millimeters at the front and at the back it's a 240 millimeter single disc let's show you that as well and of course it's got ABS and that again is a, a by bray uh, caliper single pot in this case uh, suspension wise very basic at the front it's uh, non adjustable 41 mm uh, right way up forks uh, and then at the rear you've got these uh, well what they call what are they calling them twin coil over shocks uh, here we are it looks uh, looks quite fancy they're only adjustable for preload uh, seat height nice and low 804 millimeters really nice seat on here I like this sort of quilted effect that they've done again just in keeping with the current sort of retro trend isn't it uh, weight wise to say 202 kilograms uh, curb weight is what Royal Enfield says so that's wet weight it really does feel nice and light when you're riding her uh, no problems there tank capacity on here lovely tank classic shape here we are uh, it holds 12.5 litres, which doesn't sound huge, but I imagine this is a pretty frugal bike uh, in real world riding. Uh, let's just show you that dash, or the instruments I should say. Classic couple of clocks there, I think they look good. And then the switch gear here, again no lesser quality than any other bike that I've ridden, I have to say. Very simple though, no riding modes or unnecessary electronics. There we go, there's the other side. Very nicely done. Dual channel Bosch ABS on this. Uh, it does have an LED tail light, although I have to say these lights look pretty horrible, but the good news is, there's the tail light, that's grim isn't it? <laughs> the good news is you can get lots of accessories for this bike. First time Royal Enfield has brought out lots of official accessories when they've launched the bike. Uh, so you can get things like uh, luggage, additional lights, all that kind of thing, crash bars, uh, it's all there to get. As uh, I say, price 5500 on the road, uh, which is incredible. Um, so there we go. Not quite yet available to uh, buy, I don't think. As I mentioned, it's been a long time coming, this bike. Uh, and these now demos available in the dealers, but uh, it's a uh, matter of putting your name down. I'm not sure what the deliveries will be, uh, but hopefully soon. Alrighty, okay, I think that's uh, it for the spec. Let's jump on again and uh, see if we can find some slightly faster roads, see how she goes. Oh, just before I jump on, let me just show, I forgot to mention the tyres, here we are. These are these tyres that, uh, as I say, have been made specifically for the bike by Pirelli. And you can see that the um, the tread pattern there is very similar to the ones, I think, on the Street Twin uh, are similar. But these are obviously a size specific for the Royal Enfield. I've got their demo bike all dirty now, oh dear. Uh, wheels look great, actually, don't they, with the, with the spokes as well. Uh, really, really nice. And things like uh, the general fit and finish of the bike is much better than any other Royal Enfield that I've seen. Things like the, you know, the frame welds. Uh, look quite nice and neat they're not like bird droppings just splattered on there uh, so yeah they definitely up the game on quality as well which is great and I love this fuel cap look it's got it looks like a bit like a Monza cap it is lockable though does that all right okay let's get this show back on the road surprising how light it does feel actually for, for a bike that looks quite substantial it does sound great right nothing coming Right, just while I'm in the hunt for a slightly faster road, I must just say thanks very much to the Steves up at the uh, Royal Enfield dealer here in Watford. It's called the Bike Den. If you've not been up there, it's well worth a uh, check out if you're in the area. I'll give you a uh, cup of coffee. There's Lou's. <laughs> and they're very sort of hip and trendy, the uh, Enfield dealers. They're all of a similar sort of build, and it's well worth uh, checking them out and 
Pound River visit if you, as I say, if you're in the area. And indeed, you could get yourself a ride on this very bike if you so desired. So thanks to those guys once again for letting me borrow the bike. Very impressed with the clutch and the gearbox on this. It's as good as any other bike I've ever ridden. And that's meant in a good way because previously I found uh, Enfield clutches and gearboxes really, really agricultural. But this, this doesn't feel agricultural in the slightest. I'm just thinking what this would sound like if you put an aftermarket pipe on it. Gave it a bit more volume because the sound of this is lovely. It's just not quite loud enough. Right, this looks like a slightly fast road up here. Let's just uh, try not to get lost but go up here a bit. Like a fabulous commuter this because it is so light. It's pretty confidence inspiring if you're going to do some filtering and weaving around. Right, let's see what it's like. Let me give it some beans. Oh yeah, there's no lack of go there. Perfect, I've often said in the past that uh, you know you don't have to have massive engines to have fun on a motorcycle. I think this at uh, 650 is probably just the ideal size. You've got enough grunt that you can get past anything else on the road. It's not so big that it's super heavy. It's difficult to move around. So yeah, as a commuter it would be brilliant. Or indeed as your only bike, because you could do anything on this. You could go for ride outs at weekends, scratch around the lanes, chuck the bags on, go for a tour, whatever you wanted. Not quite the faster roads I wanted, but hey ho. Well, I can safely say, without doubt, this is the best Royal Enfield I've ever ridden. It's light, it sounds nice, it goes well. It's got a bit of character about the engine, but not in a, you know, not in a bad way. There's no really terrible vibes or anything like that through the pegs or the handlebars. And it's an absolute snip at 5,500 on the road. As I say, the uh, fancier paint jobs with metal flake and that, I think another 250 quid, something like that on top. But I can't think of any other bikes that offer such a nice ride at such a price. I commend it to the house. So there we go, that's my uh, first impressions review. The Royal Enfield 650 Interceptor. Really nice. If you're in the market for this sort of bike, do yourself a favour and go and get a ride on one. Because it might just tick all the boxes for you. Okay, so that's uh, just about it for my uh, first impressions review of the uh, Royal Enfield 650 Interceptor. I hope that's been of some interest. If this is the first time you've seen one of my videos, thanks very much for watching all the way till the end. I don't just do uh, bike reviews here on the Mission of Flyer, but I do uh, bike maintenance, how to take care of your bike, things in the garage, I do trips and tours, I even do uh, bits and pieces about current bike news and the odd live stream too. Uh, basically anything and everything to do with motorcycles. I'll try and cover it here on the Missenden and Flyer. If you've not done so already, it'd be great to have you hit that subscriber button. It'd be great to uh, have you along on one of my future videos. Alright, that's it for now. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Missenden and Flyer. Cheerio.